Can we see my screen? No. Yes. Yes, we can. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I'm James Dunlop. I'm a senior uh, design engineer at, uh, and an engineering consultant. So today I'm going to discuss a few designs that I've worked on over the last couple of years that have um, used fabricated steel um, in a sort of modular way and how these have developed. So um, I've shown a few projects chronologically so that we can see how we've applied the same uh, philosophy differently to suit each project. Um, I'll then review a, a bridge demolition scheme at the end that use a propping scheme that sort of came from this philosophy, if that makes sense. So um, this is the Majestic project. I won't go into detail on this because there's a CPD already on our website on this that we've already given. Um, but essentially, uh, the trusses transferred the loads from the wall to the towers, which were filmed as pods um, or modules, uh, which transferred the load, grand, uh, load down to the foundations. Um, these were designed as modules so that we could uh, assemble them at ground level and then lift them into place, uh, minimizing working at height and also uh, allowing them to be reusable. Um, moving forward onto another facade retention scheme. Um, so this scheme is slightly different, but we have used the same idea of this uh, pod system uh, because it, 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 it worked well on site. So uh, on this, I'll just find my pointer. So this is an elevation and these are the side walls of the building here. It's quite laggy on my screen, so I don't know if that will work for you, but um, basically, typically a facade retention works in one of three ways. So you have uh, either frames at regular centers uh, to support the wall, uh, whalers that transfer the load to towers and then down to ground level, as with the Majestic on the previous slide, or we prop back to um, existing shear walls within the structure that remain. Um, this is slightly different because in this case, we had two walls to support and we effectively made a large portal frame to resist the overturning forces, um, which had a lot of benefits in terms of we didn't have to use kennelage because we could tie into the walls at the base and the frame did the work. But we use this modular system again. Um, and in this scenario, these modules here, which is the side panel, um, that was a that, that came like that to site. It was all welded, um, ready to go. And you could have the two, you'd build the two panels and you'd just put your time members in, in and then lift the pod into place and it worked quite well. Um, so it's the same philosophy, I suppose, as the previous system, but adapted to suit this project's needs. Um, moving forward again and I suppose this is slightly inspired by uh, the previous schemes that we'd worked on, is um, some of the propping that was used on the Churchill Way flyover uh, demolition, which Angus has covered in several CPD seminars. Um, so my involvement on that scheme was this propping design. And basically because, the, for those of you who don't know, there was a 230 meters long uh, flyover to be demolished that had, um, it was uh, dual carriageway post-tension reinforcement concrete bridges um, that had varying spans up to 33 meters. And to facilitate the demolition, we had a lot of propping to do. And there was a lot of different heights um, due to the gradients in the bridge and due to the different levels. Um, so we designed a system that could be adapted to each specific scenario. So I suppose the key change here from the previous end panel um, on the uh, facade retention scheme was that the UC sections were rotated 90 degrees. And rather than having bracing directly doing the work to resist loadings, it was bracing just to reduce the effective length of the columns. Um, but again, this 
it, it worked well because we could put this in place at several different positions, uh, unassemble it and reassemble it to suit the varying heights along the, the bridge. Um, and here's, here's an image of it in place on, on the scheme. And you can see there's a slightly different um, makeup for, the, for both this one and this one due to the levels. And it, it worked well on the project. Um, going forward again to um, another bridge demolition scheme. So this was a footbridge demolition over the A46. Um, so it was both, uh, so it was six lanes beneath three each way. So it's, it's quite a big span. Um, and we, we came into this project fairly late on when the methodology had effectively been agreed on in that it had to be lifted in one hit and a tandem lift. Um, so we added or, or reduced, um, de-risked the scheme um, in several ways. Um, first way being the saw cut locations. We amended them so that these were horizontal rather than vertical, which was initially proposed. Um, this meant that when they were the, the saw cuts were made, the bridge was in a position where uh, it could have been put down on back onto the supports. So it was a uh, not a dynamic lift. Um, secondly, we designed the lifting beams uh, to suit the project, and we designed these with reuse in mind. So these beams were circular, uh, square hollow sections and had slightly larger square hollow sections with the lifting eyes on, so they could be very easily adjusted and could be reused um, several schemes going forward in the future. Um, and you can see the details of that in place uh, on the images there. And again, the uh, this prop in design, I suppose, is the it's almost an, an iteration of the previous uh, designs, but to 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 suit this project's needs. So it was a slightly different uh, dimensions, and it worked well on this project because the um, there was a very good. Uh, collaboration almost with the fabricators. So when we started out, we said, what steel do you have in your yard? Can we utilize that um, so that economically it's for the best overall? And um, our, our client were very pleased with this approach and it, it worked well. Um, and here is the bridge uh, being removed in the tandem lift. Um, and that is the end of my presentation. It, um, if you want to hand over to Angus now, 